Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey there, Growing in Grace on the air once again distributed worldwide thanks to the gift of the internet. I'm Mike Kapler with Joel Brzezinski. Hey, just uh, relax a little bit here. We're not your typical ministry program. We're here with some good news, and we're here to provide you with some hope, some joy, some things that you can actually get excited about when it comes to Jesus Christ and the good news of the gospel. So, Mr. Joel, here we are once again going through Skype, and uh, we got some fun things to talk about, including I think we're going to start focusing, you know, last week we talked about It Is Finished and um, what that all meant, at least up to a point. It's hard to uh, sum it up in just 14 minutes, but that's what we talked about last week, and we'll soon be talking about Jesus dying and why he had to die and what's it all about. But, uh, you know, we love it when we hear from people out there. So if you haven't ever corresponded with us before or it's been a while, feel free to um, let us know you're out there and uh, send us an email or correspond with us somehow, especially if uh, if our little podcast has, has brought some encouragement to you. Yeah, and I've got one of those emails that somebody sent us uh, recently here. Um, of course, you can find all of our past podcasts, every single one of them, over eight years worth of them, at org. They're all archived there. And uh, somebody had come across our podcast while searching for Grace, and uh, here's what she said, a, a young lady from Western Australia saying, I uh, learned of True Grace one year ago to the day. It's been a journey that's, it's been a journey, that's for sure, going against the grain that I grew up with. And Cap, I know that we can uh, relate to that, that's for sure. But anyway, she says, but it's amazing. I have shared your podcast with many, and my brother shares your casts with his men's group each week. We love the way there is the both of you discussing. It's easy to understand. Thanks for the great work, guys. I have a long way to go, but enjoying unlearning law and learning to base my heart in grace, which is hard, but getting there. Thanks again. I thought that was a really cool, uh, a really cool email that we received, um, and that really it, it gets to the heart of why we do this. That is the focus to help people to get their hearts established and rooted and grounded in grace. And it does go against the grain of what so many of us were taught growing up in church. The root seems to be. Uh, sin-focused or performance-focused or whatever, as we've talked about lots of times over the years here on Going in Grace, and uh, to hear from somebody uh, where this is really helping uh, to get her heart and, and where she's established in grace and where she's sharing it with her brother and his, her brother is sharing it with a men's group, that's just really exciting, Cap. It's good to know that, uh, we're, that something that we're saying is helping somebody to get their heart established in grace. Yeah, and think about what she said. She's got a long way to go, but she's getting there, and it's all very encouraging. She also said, you know, this, this is going against the grain and unlearning the things that she's been taught, trying to grow in grace— that it's hard. That's the power of religious flesh. Because you see, growing in grace and and the gospel, it's really not meant to be hard, but it is sometimes, especially when you've been so entrenched in certain dogma, certain teaching that goes against the grain, (laughs) goes against the gospel. And so you have to change the way you think about things. And we understand that, so don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that Growing in grace shouldn't be hard, but that's the power of religion sometimes. It's it's like religion has claws, or like it has branches that just kind of wrap around and, and, and kind of strangle and grip people really good. It could be because, hard. Because the gospel is meant to be easy and light exactly. and, uh, you know, not burdensome like the law was. You know, Jesus said, hey, you know, I'm, I got some light stuff here. It's not meant to be burdensome. It's easy. It's light. Uh, rest in me. But yeah, coming out of the other stuff and, and being able to just abide in that, that can be the, the quote unquote hard part. Yeah. And, and it takes time. And it just, uh, you know, that's why it's good to renew our minds uh, to the truth of the goodness and the love and the grace of God on a daily basis, you know, as much as we can to hear and to listen to and focus in on the good news. And, and part of the good news, uh, involved kind of a tragic thing happening. Uh, Christ died for us. You know, he was crucified. You know, he was beaten and nailed to a cross, and he died 
for our sins. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 says, for Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and he was buried and rose the third day according to the Scriptures. And so why? That's what we're going to be talking about here. Why did Jesus die? And Cap has all the answers. He knows everything. <laughs> and so... <laughs> and so <I> know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? I wouldn't even want to have all the answers. <laughs> well, I thought you did, because I really, I'm riding your coattails here today. Oh, I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't think, personally, that eternity is going to allow us to have all the answers. I just, I think there, there's always going to be an opportunity to learn more, to mm. grow more, and to expand. And so, I wouldn't want to have all the answers. But let's talk this out. Jesus, dying. One of the, the major things about the Christian faith, of course... And yet a lot of people probably have never really stopped to think about why Jesus died. And I've got to say, Joel, that I, I, I see a lot of things posted on Facebook out there in the grace community, and I rarely get caught up in, in posting on any of it because it's just easier for us to do a podcast instead. But mm -hmm. I, I saw some things where, you know, some people were suggesting that, you know, it wasn't God's will for Jesus to die or God really didn't have any hand or any part in uh, Jesus' suffering that uh, Jesus was actually murdered. And uh, look, I, I want to say that if, if, if Jesus was murdered, really, really, guys, seriously, then if that's true, then th there is no gospel. Mm -hmm. There isn't one. And so let's take a look at some scriptures here, Joel. And uh, you and I were kind of sharing these together before the podcast, which was actually about two hours ago. And <laughs> because we, t we talk too much sometimes before starting a podcast, not because we're preparing for the next podcast, we just can't shut up talking well, between ourselves. Plus, with your uh, old age and your memory, you couldn't remember your password on Skype, and it took us a while <laughs> to get going here today. Yeah, it took me an extra few minutes, but I've got a new password now. <laughs> well, that's good. No, just... Write it down, because you know that those uh, cells in your head aren't going to hold you know, it for I, too long. I think I'm actually, you know, speaking of not having all the answers, I think I'm actually going to enjoy uh, my memory failing from time to time, because I can just start talking about the same things all over again <laughs> and enjoy them just as much as the first time. But yeah, That's going to um, be your excuse anyway, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so... John 10, let me look at a few scriptures here. As the Father knows, as the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. So, you see, Jesus coming here to die was preordained. I mean, this, this was not something that happened spontaneously because, because he was betrayed or something like that. It wasn't a surprise thing. Jesus goes on to say in John 10, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me. And this is key. No one takes my life from me. I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my father, John chapter 10, Romans 5, verse 6, for when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love. A demonstration of God's love was found in the death of Jesus Christ. God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But much more than having been justified by what? By his blood. Now, if you don't think Jesus was meant to die uh, for some reason, or he wasn't meant to be punished or scourged, or that somehow that wasn't God's will, then how are we justified? We're justified by his blood that was shed at the cross, and we shall be saved from wrath through him because of that blood. Remember Hebrews, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness, no remission of sin. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. First Corinthians 15, three, Christ died for our sins according to what? According to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose the third day according to the scriptures. What scriptures are we talking about? They didn't have the New Testament back at this time. They were referring back to the Old Testament scriptures, Joel, much of which was from the first covenant that was pointing us to this suffering of Jesus Christ on the cross. That's right. You know, so much of what we know about Jesus 
is actually found in the Old Testament, and that's a good thing. Cap and I, you know, we talk a lot about how we are not under the Old Covenant, and that's true. We're not under the Old Covenant. We're under the New Covenant. The Old is gone, and the New has come. But one thing about the Old Testament scriptures is that they point to Jesus. They tell us about Jesus. They tell us what was going to happen to him and what this was all about. And we find so many things in those Old Covenant scriptures that let us know why Jesus died, why he was rose again, and so on and so forth. You know, when, you know, so many times Paul referred to the Old Covenant scriptures so he could help people to understand the reality of the death of Jesus and why he was buried and why he rose again. You know, again, if it was just for nothing, like you said earlier, if, if he was murdered, if it was just a matter of, of senseless men coming and taking his life for no reason whatsoever, other than just they were just murderers, that just spits on the gospel of Jesus Christ. That, it spits on the reason why he came. God foreordained it from the beginning of time that Jesus would become a man— It was God's will for Jesus to become a man and to die on the cross for our sins. You know, speaking of Jesus Christ, Isaiah 53 talks about how Jesus has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, and that's the lashes that he took, that's the blood that he shed, by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord, that's God, has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's why Jesus died, to take our iniquity upon himself. It's so very important to know that, and it's it's such a blessed thing to know that Jesus Christ was on the cross, and all of these things happened to him because it was God's will, and it was for our benefit. It was because God so loved the world that all of this happened. Yeah. I mean, even Jesus himself said, uh, early in John, he said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. I know people were thinking about the physical building of the temple. He was referring to his body as a temple. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Another thing to remember is uh, in Romans 4.25, Jesus was delivered up or handed over to die because of our offenses. That's what it says in Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Because of our offenses, he was handed over to die. He was delivered up. But he was raised because of our justification. It's all good news here, people. But this was the reason that Jesus came. He came to die. He came to fulfill the will of the Father. And because he did this, we have received justification through his blood. Yeah, that's right, Cap. And as you said there, and as you said a few times during this program, it was the will of the Father, the sacrifice of Christ that took away all sin. That was the will of of the Father. God never desired burnt offerings. He never desired the law. But Jesus coming to die, that was Jesus doing the will of God. And we're going to talk about that next week right here on Growing in Grace at growingandgrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.